stuff here, but mathematics directly describes reality. Absolutely, positively, directly. Anywhere in the universe, right now, is you can describe phenomena precisely with mathematics. This was a big revelation to me when I was still in, in, uh, in high school. My teacher was, was teaching us uh, trigonometry. We were learning uh, uh, you know, imaginary numbers. Here's one for you. Who comes up with these names? Imaginary numbers. They're not real. They're figments of our imagination. Do you remember what imaginary numbers are? Do you remember I? Right? I-X. Okay, do you remember you know, the idea of what's the square root of minus 1? Remember that the square root of my so what's the square root of a negative uh, of a negative number right? That's i. So the reason we have that is because when you take the square root square root of a number, you end up with plus or minus that number. Right? This is this is something you got to remember. Now why is this important? This is the concept. You know, you imagine our kids in school the first time we present this stuff to them and they go, "Why am I learning this stuff?" And I was lucky because I was also taking um, electrical shop and our electronics teacher showed us why imaginary numbers were real and what they meant. Because what you can do is once you understand the math, you can produce something called a demodulator and modulator. And then what you discover is that the spectrum that we use for sending radio waves or the capacity, the channel capacity inside of a wire or fiber is a combination of real and imaginary numbers. It's actually the multiplied sum. And so what happens is, if we didn't understand what imaginary numbers were, if we didn't understand the mathematical principles and laws of imaginary numbers, we would only be able to communicate using half the available spectrum. Think of that today. The value of spectrum, right, wireless spectrum. It's unbelievable. We pay billions of dollars for a tiny, a tiny little sliver of nothing. You ever think about that? Remember the hard vacuum part? Radio waves go through hard vacuum. So therefore, we are paying billions of dollars for the right to use a tiny little sliver of nothing. So there's value for you, right? Okay. So why is that important? Because if we didn't know about imaginary math, if we didn't understand the principles behind imaginary numbers, we would have never discovered the modulation opportunities to take advantage of the other half of the available spectrum. That's a lot of capacity. All available spectrum, wireless, wireline, copper wire, fiber optic, waveguide, microwave, all, half of it is only the stuff that we take for granted, that we assume, the common sense approach, the, the real integer math. You combine it with imaginary math, you get the other half. And you can do some amazing stuff because you can modulate both halves. If you're in phase, that's what it's all about for any of you that are studying uh, signal and communication theory. All right, so there's one example where math directly describes reality and gave us an insight that has incredible value today. What's another one? So did you know that less than 200 years ago, we thought that electricity, magnetism, static electricity, and chemical electricity, batteries, were all different. They're all different forces. They weren't related. People were, you know, you could see them in the in the in the in the, uh, uh, the king's, you know, courtyard, and they're, and they're having these these kind of little sort of entertainment experiments where they got a piece of fur and a piece of paraffin, and they're rubbing it and barking and, and zapping each other. Think, wow, this is pretty cool. They thought that was different than the lightning they saw outside. They thought that was different from the chemical batteries that some people were using and playing with. They thought that was different from lodestones, which are magnetic property, uh, uh, pyrite metal that would magnetize in the earth. So they thought all this was different. And as long as they thought this was different, they had no idea its value. And then there was this uh, researcher, there was a physicist by the name of Faraday, who discovered that electricity and magnetism are exactly the same thing. And why was that an important discovery? They're the same thing. They're just different ways of looking at it. Well, there's somebody who came by by the name of Maxwell. And Maxwell came up with his famous Maxwell equations. And these Maxwell equations exactly, exactly um, describe this transaction, this, this relationship. 
fact that extreme magnetism are, are the same thing, just different manifestations of exactly the same thing. Why was that important? Because somebody went out and solved the Maxwell equations, which are actually beautiful if you think about it. If you ever see them, it's just beautiful examples of mathematical symmetry. Now, you take those equations, you solve them, you end up with a wave equation. Now, why is that important? It's wave equations have symmetry. Well, the wave equations predicted that we were able to send information, waves, to that hard vacuum, to that nothing that we've been talking about. You, could, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. Reality is weirder than anything we can imagine. Right? So math predicted a fundamental phenomenon in the universe called information transfer, electromagnetic radiation. Exactly. And then what happened after that? Well, Marconi figured out, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe we could build a business on this. And he created the whole telegraph industry and the ship-to-shore industry and made a fortune on this. Actually, Marconi was even more than that. He was an actual true researcher and inventor. An inventor. He created what's called shortwave, which at the time, whenever we wanted to transmit, everyone else had to be quiet while we used the entire spectrum. This is before we discovered imaginary numbers actually applied. We used the entire spectrum for the entire country. So I can send my little did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, right? Can you imagine how expensive that transmission was? Marconi realized that you could break those into channels and you could use filters so you could all transmit at the same time using the same um, spectrum. That was a brilliant discovery. And that, I think, is his most important discovery. It wasn't sending that signal across the ocean. Um, so that's, that's something. So we unify electricity and magnetism, and we came up with communications, power generation, power transmission, really important stuff. AC motors, three phase, right? All of a sudden Tesla comes into this. Amazing stuff gets commercialized. Leads to the modern revolution. All we did was we noticed that a magnet and a coil of wire kind of were interchangeable. And then we came up with the math to describe that absolutely and a whole industry and a whole new dimension uh, of growth occurred. Wealth creation that we never could have ever have imagined came out of that within 50 years of that discovery. So what was the next thing that we discovered? Well, we discovered that energy and matter are the same thing. Right? Einstein comes up with his famous special relativity equation, his derivation, which is unbelievable. He thought this stuff up. Pure thought. He sat down and did a thought experiment and said, you know what? If we're able to walk and our molecules and, and atoms don't fall apart, then the laws of physics must be consistent everywhere and that the speed of light must be a constant. And he comes up with special relativity. Then he solves it and he comes up five-page proof. It's unbelievable. comes down to E equals MC squared. Most famous equation of all time? It's really fundamental. Right? Energy and matter are interchangeable. And what did that do for us? <laughs> a lot. Um, the same time as this is going on, he also discovers the answer to, and by the way, I don't know if you know this, but, and this gets back to that atoms are mostly nothing. Um, he wrote, in 1905, he wrote these seminal papers, four of them. Three, three absolutely changed the world. One of them was the first proof that atoms exist. Did you know that we had no proof that atoms existed until 1905 when he explained building in motion using statistics? He used mathematical principles to figure out something that looked random and infer something that you can't see and prove that it existed. That's pretty amazing, right? Again, power of the idea coupled with the discipline of mathematics as a tool, being able to see things that don't exist or that you can't possibly imagine exist. Again, breakthrough thinking and the power of research. So what did that do for us? So he then explained something called the photo photoelectric effect, which he got a Nobel Prize for. What was that all about? He showed that energy is quantized. The most important discovery of all time. Why? Why is that important? Well, because it's quantized. And this is the part, like I said, you can't make this stuff up. Because it's quantized, it led to semiconductors. If it wasn't quantized, we'd be stuck with tubes. Can you imagine walking around with a BlackBerry that was running on tubes? 
that is, you guys yeah, remember Peach, right? I know, because we talked about, I talked about Steve Coogers, and you remember what that was. You're probably watching it on an Admiral TV or an RCA TV, right, with the tuner knob. Remember that? You have to actually stand up, walk across the room. <laughs> had like eight channels, and they were all different back then. So, um, but getting back to this, there is there is a path to this. And I keep going back to the hard vacuum. Um, so, because it was quantized, we came up with something. Uh, you, you have to under, like, you can't see this stuff. Okay, there's no microscope that can see these things. This is all in our minds. It's completely a construct of our imagination. It just happens to be accurate. Right? So unlike all the kind of cultural stuff we do, unlike all the social stuff that we do, which is very important, don't get me wrong, and this is something that maybe someday we'll discover that there is a correlation between math and that stuff, but let's think about this for a second. What's amazing about the discipline of math and physics and science is that it is 100% reproducible and 100% correct. In other words, you can rely on it with your life. Absolute 100% rely on the results and its prediction. That's pretty important, at least, uh, at least in mathematics and physics. Let's stick with that for now. So that quantum, the, the, the quantum mechanics that came out from understanding the so we, we've unified electricity and magnetism. We've unified energy and, and, um, and matter. We unified something called wave-particle duality. We, we had this problem that particles appeared to be waves and particles at the same time. And what happened was quantum mechanics unified those things. When they unified those things, it predicted things. It predicted certain effects. One of them was this semiconductor effect, tunneling. It's really important. Okay, so think about this. You take a piece, you take some sand, you melt it down and you purify it. It's a perfect insulator. No electricity goes through it. You take the math and you realize that if you put a little bit of impurities in there, and some rare earth material, and you pluck those atoms down at just the right order, and that material can become a conductor. In fact, it can become a conductor you can control. You can turn it on and off. It's like that hot and water, cold water in the morning, right? But you can actually control it. And unlike tubes, it never wears out. It runs at incredible speeds and uses almost no power, right? So semiconductors were a discovery that was made possible by our unification of, of wave particle duality, an, ex an explanation of it, by coming up with equations that predicted this. Now, these theories have been in existence now for 100 years, literally. And they have been 100% verified in every test we've ever been able to achieve. Now here's the funny thing. Relativity and quantum mechanics are irrecon irreconcilable when they come together in the mix. So what works for quantum mechanics at the lowest scale predicts complete bizarre, are you, this again, nobody can make this stuff up, so listen to what the prediction is. The prediction of quantum mechanics, the, the, the correct, currently correct explanation of particles, tiny particles you can't see that are mostly hard vacuum, predicts that the universe has an infinite number of copies. That's what it predicts. It's almost nonsensical. Relativity, which describes the motion of galaxies, orbits, um, black holes, neutron stars, all these amazing things, when it tries to predict anything the size of an atom, you, it, it predicts that all atoms are basically black holes, little mini black holes, which we know they are. How is it that we can have two theories that are so accurate, to the highest degree of precision we've been able to put them to the test, and yet they predict completely nonsensical um, results when they try and overlap? That's a pretty big deal. That means we have, we, there's something wrong. We're missing something. That's what it says to me, anyway. So, where is this? Where does this lead me? Well, we are about to run the biggest.